Live. It is Tuesday, February 18th, and my hope is that everything is working correctly <laughs> because over the last couple of days, it has not been working correctly. So my hope is, is that everything is working correctly today and I'll be joined from people on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for joining a VO's journey. My name is Anthony Pika and this show is all about helping the new and upcoming voiceover artists grow their business and sidestep all of the crazy things that I seem to step on. If you get a chance to say hello, please do. Uh, I'm really looking forward to having everybody on like uh, we have done in the past, but uh, the last two episodes have been kind of messy. Hey, we got a message from YouTube. That's Wonderful. So I'm super excited. And we have people here coming in on Instagram, people on Facebook. Uh, I haven't heard from Facebook yet, but uh, hopefully we are good to go on Facebook as well. That's wonderful. People um, are because the whole thing with YouTube was a mess. But anyways, let's go ahead. It's, it's all working now. I'm excited to finally be back. And uh, I want to dive right in and get started today. And this is a question that actually came from uh, my group, uh, the, the VO's Journey group on Facebook uh, from Jake, who is a new member. And uh, he asked the question, how to start a voiceover business while working a full-time job with a family? I think this is uh, one of those things where I definitely have a personal connection to. And uh, it means a lot to me because I know that, you know, it's it's what I went through when I first started, uh, you know, growing my voiceover business is, you know, I had a full time job. I had, uh, you know, I have a young family. And I think it's important to note, too, that, you know, it is uh, this is not easy. I mean, we know that, right? But it needs to, I feel like that needs to be said. It is not easy to do this. This is a business like anything else, and it is hard to grow a business. It really is hard to grow a business. And I, I just, I, I think it's so important to, you know, talk about that and, 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 and know that it's, it's okay to struggle, okay? And that's a part of the challenge. So anyways, um... I'm not seeing. <laughs> uh, I'm not seeing comments on Facebook. You know, it. it what a. Oh, uh, what a mess! I don't know why um, we have so much issues with this restream, but um, I'm gonna have to uh, just go ahead and keep going forward because I know that it is streaming on Facebook, even though I can't see any of the comments. I'm only seeing the comments on YouTube. So I do apologize. Yesterday we were seeing the comments on uh, <laughs> seeing the comments on um, on uh, Facebook and not YouTube. So you know it's it's uh, you know what a what a mess. Uh, and it looks like um, yeah, I mean it shows me connected, but uh, yeah, Zuckerberg, exactly Zuckerberg. Uh, needs to get his act together. But anyway, so let me just dive in and uh, you just go forward. If you happen to be on Facebook and you do want to uh, put in a question, just go ahead and head over to YouTube. I do apologize about that, but we're going to get a good episode in today, uh, whether or not you know I can get comments from uh, Facebook or not, okay? So anyways, uh, and I apologize about that. I'm not sure why it's happening, but we'll just move forward. So anyways, moving forward, I want to talk about um, really uh, quickly kind of, you know, how I, I started my personal story with, uh, in, 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 you know, regards to creating a voiceover business with a family uh, about three years ago in 2017, early 2017, I uh, was teaching and uh, teaching theater and so forth. And, you know, I was really searching around for a way to get back into acting because I, I, you know, I missed it. But at the same time, I wanted to be able to uh, have a family and a home and uh, a stable life instead of moving around uh, and and going to all kinds of different places as a professional actor needs to do at times. So I was definitely looking around. I didn't necessarily want to get into community theater. So I searched around and lo and behold, came on a 
video on voiceover. And I was like, wow, this is great. And I loved voice. I love audiobooks. You know, I listen to audiobooks all the time. So I was like, wow, this is what I could do this. So, you know, I, without knowing anything at all about voiceover one bit, I went ahead and got uh, a microphone and different things and went from there. And that's uh, how I basically, <laughs> that's how I jumped in, was looking to get back into theater and found voiceover video and on YouTube. And then from there, I, I took off and I got uh, bought a $40 microphone and a hobo and I built my hobo fort and you know, out of packing blankets and PVC pipe. And that's kind of how I got started. Now, at the time, I was working a full time job. So I'd leave at about six in the morning and I'd get home around five or six at night. Then we had the kids there and my wife would get home around the same time. So we were always, you know, struggling to get the kids, you know, in time because daycare went until six. And then after that, we'd have dinner, spend a little bit of time and put the kids to bed, put my wife to bed. And then I would start working on my business at 10. But see, I had to also put up my booth or my hobo for it every time that I did uh, I did it and take it back down at the end of the night I couldn't leave it up because our house was so small at the time that you had to take it down or it'd be like right in the middle of of uh of the walkthrough so I couldn't stay up so anyways you know I did that for quite a while and uh you know it is it it is one of those things where I know what it is like to build this business with a family and a young family too, young kids. So I want to dive into a couple of different things that you can do, I think, from my own personal experience and ideas that you can grow your business when you have a limited amount of time. Because, you know, like, for example, today, you know, I woke up and uh, took my, uh, took, uh, had, you know, helped my son get out of school, you know, kissed my wife goodbye as she went to work. And I took my daughter to, um, to her, to preschool. And then I came back and I started work around eight this morning. And, you know, I mean, like, I just, I've already worked. It's one, one oh seven. So I've already worked for five hours today. I must have, I think I've done about 10 voiceovers today. It's been a busy day of voiceover work, which was great, but I've already done that. I've worked on a bunch of other things. You know, I kind of wrote out a full piece for this. This, um, session today because I was bothered that I haven't been able to have a really good session. And um, so I kind of wrote that out. And I also had a, a conference. I talked to my um, my son's school because, you know, when you, you as everybody knows, he's been sick uh, or he was sick. So I had to talk to them about that. And so, you know, I've been really busy and I got a lot done. But see, that's five hours of work that I've already done. And after this is over, I'm going to be able to go and, you know, do more work later on in the afternoon. But when you, when I was working a full-time job, there's no way any of this was possible. So because of that, I want to give you a couple of things to think about. First is, oh, somebody on Facebook has responded. I have a Facebook uh, so I think what's happening is there's certain places on Facebook that are on and there's other places that are not because I'm streaming on three different Facebook channels. So there might be people on a different Facebook channel that is working and not another one. So I'm just glad that I saw Facebook response. Anyways, um, so uh, the first thing I want to talk about is you have to make a decision. OK, you have to make a decision. And I think the, the decision you have to make is when you are busy with a full time job and you're busy trying to you know grow family and everything, you cannot approach your voiceover business the same way you can as a person who is doing it full time. You just don't have the time. So with that being said, you need to make a decision on, I personally think, picking a platform and and it's interesting is i give the i give different advice to people who are working full time but you need to pick a platform or are closer to getting full time work pick a platform especially when you're just starting out pick one platform to jump in on okay whether it's acx or Fiverr, and I recommend those, or Upwork. And I know we've had some, Upwork has been pushing a lot recently. I've heard a lot about Upwork. Got some exciting things in the pipeline about Upwork. I'm not gonna give that away, but uh, we got some uh, cool things coming for Upwork. And But anyways, the point is, is that there's a couple sites like ACX, Fiverr, Upwork that you can get started on that I recommend you make a decision to dive into one of those and put all of your efforts into one when you're first stopping. 
Uh, stopping when you're first starting. Sorry. All right. Yeah. Somebody mentioned coffee. I need to drink some more coffee after that line. Because the reason why you want to make that decision to me is because you don't have time to, you know, do 20 different sites all at once. Yes, you can, you know, make it work over time, but you don't have all of that extra, you know, um, seconds and minutes and hours in the day to go through each and every one. You've got to choose one. When you're first starting, and then you gotta dive and in deep into it and make that site, you know, work for you as most as possible, you know, as most as possible, just like I did when I was doing ACX. So that's you know, I dove into that and I, I did everything I could to make that site work for me as much as possible. You know, and and there was the reason behind it was honestly because you know, we because I wanted, well, actually, I'm going to go into that. Um, am I going to go into that later? Let me see. I, I wrote a whole list of things I wanted to talk about. Uh, no. Okay, I'll go into it now. So the reason why I did that, the reason why I chose ACX was because time, right? The reality is I needed something that I could do that wasn't on a strict deadline. Now, yes, audiobooks are on a deadline, but they're not on a 24-hour deadline, which was really nice for me because I needed something that I could do that was not going to be immediate. Then uh, I also wanted something that I could do that uh, didn't take, you know, I, I could do over a period of time and I didn't have to I didn't have to do it during working hours. See, a lot of the work I do now, I do during working hours. You know what I mean? And and what I didn't know and what you may not know if you're not full time yet is that when you go full time, you'll start to realize that there there is actually a lot of work that you get during working hours that I couldn't get and I couldn't do while I was full time working at another job. So, you know, that changes and that increases your income as well. But I didn't know that. So, you know, I, I had but I, I realized that, like, I couldn't talk to people at 10 p.m. at night, at least not in the U.S., right, which you learn as well. But for ACX purposes, ACX is not um, really that much over the world, right? They're, they're, they're pretty much based in only a few places and mainly in the U.S. So um, it is that kind of situation where I had to double down on that site just because of that. And it was really nice to build a sort of, um, in my mind, the royalty share aspect of ACX was really exciting because I wanted to be able to you know, slowly build up a residual income so that it would just continue to pay me. I had to work once and then it would pay me for seven years, right? Because that's how long you get royalties for. Excuse me, it's how long you get royalties for. So anyways, that was my thought process behind that. But you can do that with Fiverr. You can do that with Upwork as well. Now, of course, Fiverr, you know, you're going to have a limit, a more limited time, but that's if you choose it. You could choose a two-day delivery, a three-day delivery. You are going to have to understand, though, that if you jump in on Fiverr and Upwork, those places are are going to expect you to be able to respond in a timely manner. And if you're at work and someone messages you during the day and you can't respond for five hours, that's a problem on those platforms. That's why, again, I really like to use uh, ACX because it did not matter the response time. They don't judge any of that. Most of these platforms, they you know, it, it does matter how fast you respond. It matters how fast you deliver. You know what I mean? ACX didn't didn't mind that. So again, I'm talking about just starting out or I'm talking about dealing with a, a really hectic schedule, but trying to grow a voiceover business at the same time. Right. So anyways, that's what that's why I chose that. And that's what I did to combat my my time issues. OK. Um, now, I will say that there are five activities that I believe are money making activities. So moving on to the next thing, you you because you have a limited amount of time. Now, we should do this no matter what. But because you have a limited amount of time, you need to focus your efforts disproportionately on the money making activities. So what I mean by that is you need to overdo certain activities and I hate to use the word neglect, but try to not worry so much about other activities. For example, there are things like uh, I put down five here, and these are the things I kind of base my business on now and I coach other people on and uh, is is creating auditions or, or doing auditions, creating samples, sending emails, phone calls, and direct messages. Now, within those, there are different categories, but the reality is those five things 
uh, those five activities, those are your money making activities. Everything else you do, everything you else you, uh, else that you do is just the necessary evils that you have to do to run a business. But they do not directly ref- they do not directly pay off as much as those five activities. Now, as I look at the list, to be honest with you, we can we can go in and say, well. And, and, and I'm gonna be I'll be completely square and I apologize if this upsets you but emails nowadays are becoming harder and harder everybody's sending emails even more I mean like it's just it's gotten so oversaturated that you know emailing is tough with I mean I'm not saying it doesn't work but it, cold emails are just really strong I mean unless I specifically am expecting an email from someone I just go through delete 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 right I mean it's very difficult to for emails and you know everybody else does too it's probably a little bit easier for b2b because in a business you're not going to necessarily delete emails as much but still you know what i mean it's it's a possibility um phone calls are wonderful the problem is people just don't want to make phone calls and in this particular model phone calls are difficult because if you're working at night like i was i'm not calling someone at 10 p.m at night Right. So phone calls are kind of difficult. So the three ones that you really want to focus on is auditioning, creating samples and then direct messages or messaging through places like social. Since we were focusing on ACX, direct messages are not really it. So creating the auditions and the samples, those are your money making activities. And those activities you need to do more than anything else. All right, and I'm not talking about doing, you know, two or three auditions a night. I mean, I'm talking about 10, 12, 15 and getting your auditions underneath 10. Like each audition should only be taking you 10 minutes. You'd be like, Anthony, what? How could I only take 10 minutes to do an audition when the when the when the author put up 15 pages? Well, don't do 15 pages. I personally like to do two minutes or less. If after two minutes, they don't know whether or not they work for me, we're, we're not going to be good together. <laughs> okay, unless they specifically ask for X, Y, Z, all right, like, you know, they need you to do three different characters because they want to see how you read that. Still, I'm not going to do 10 pages for an audition. I'm going to do a couple of minutes, send it off to them. If they like what they hear and they want more, I might consider doing more for them. But that's how you got to move quick on these things. So the auditions and then the samples, when you do an audition, okay, I don't mind. I would use that as a sample. And then you can create your own samples. Slate it as saying it's a sample. But don't wait. Speed up your time. Okay? Because a couple of things. One, the numbers here are important. It's important to get in front of more people. And it's important to use your time effectively, which means you got to get as many auditions out as possible. Because here it is. You have no idea if the person listening to your audition is actually looking for your tone and your style and the way you speak. So the only way you can help that situation out is if the more you do, the more opportunity you're going to have to get in front of people who actually are are listening for what you're doing. Because no matter how good you are, they might be they might want a high pitch voice and you might have a low voice, right? Or you might have a low voice and they want a high pitch voice. You can't change that. And nothing's wrong with your acting or your ability. It's just the way it is, right? So, uh, you know, I just, I wanted to to point that out to you that creating, you know, a lot of samples helps too on ACX, especially because you can get a lot of bookings just by putting up samples and refreshing those samples and putting up new ones, at least three new samples every week on a, on ACX is, is a great rule, uh, uh, you know, great rule of thumb. Uh, but the auditions, so auditions are so important, so important, okay? Uh, so please, please, please notice that. And that's your money-making activities. All right. Now, I want to talk about <laughs> the part that not a lot of people ever talk about, and that's building your dream, your business, this voiceover, a future for yourself, and having con- to convince your family. So the reality is, is the tough thing is that we have, we have to convince our family uh, who they're not going to have the same desire and the same dreams we have about voiceover, which most of the times they have no idea what we're even doing. And a lot of times they don't even understand why we're trying to mess a good thing up. You know, it's funny when I was doing uh, my when I had when I was teaching and everything, by all accounts, 
I had a good job. I had benefits. You know, I had a future. I mean, you know, I wasn't, you know, barring I didn't do something, you know, illegal. I wasn't going to lose my job as a teacher. You know, I mean, I, I had a beautiful family and, you know, my wife had a, you know, we, we both, everything was fine. But I wasn't fine. Do you know what I mean? Like I wasn't fine inside. I wasn't happy with what I was doing and it was tearing me apart inside. But my family didn't know that. And the likely, likelihood is, is that I'm betting your family doesn't know that either. So when you go to do this, part of this whole thing is not only working on you and building your business, but the truth of the matter is, is that you have to also start uh, or you have to realize you've got to train your family. You've got to start to um, show them a different way of life. Right. I mean, now I work, you know, from home. <laughs> I mean, I, I this is this is it. I don't go I don't need I don't go to a job anywhere else. This is where I work in my house. It is the most amazing thing in the world, but it's different. It is completely different. Like, for example, you know, I mean, I had, you know, this morning, <laughs> my wife and I was frustrated because I was like, you know, I'm I feel like I'm doing all of these things. It's different than it used to be. But she's working super hard away from the house and I'm home. So it gives me opportunities to do more around the house. But at the same time, I have to manage my time. But that's that's further down the road. We'll, we'll get to that in an advanced video. But the point I'm trying to make now is, is that you're going to have to convince your family and, and to be straightforward, there are going to be times when they are not happy with you. <laughs> I'm going to say it nicely. There are going to be times when they're downright pissed at you especially when you have to not do things because you are trying to grow your business. I was working with someone last night, one of my students, and uh, she talked to me about the fact that she had gotten home from work, went straight into her booth, had been in there for five hours, hadn't even seen her family really. Um, she has a spouse and, and, a, and a, um, a son, and then she was going to go to bed. And she, you know, because she, but she's building this dream for her and her family. And, you know, that is what we have to do. But remember, it is for a limited time. Um, I don't know if you guys follow Dave Ramsey, but it just popped in my head. Uh, he has that saying, you know, um, live like no one else now so that you can live like no one else lives later, right? I love that saying, you know, meaning that, you know, work like no one else does now, you know, uh, so that you can live a different life like no one else lives later. And those are the things that you have to do. And unfortunately, your spouse is going to be upset with you from time to time. And they have every right to be. OK, but at the same time, they don't know what's inside you. They don't understand that fire and the passion that 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 burns within you. But it's also they don't you know, it's not fair to them because they don't understand why you're in some, you know, booth with packing blankets speaking into a microphone. I don't blame them. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, right, we can giggle about it, but it's the truth. But you have to be Superman or Superwoman. You have to be. You have to be to make it work. Because no one else is going to do it. And you know what the crazy thing is? Uh, it's, it's another thing. I, I know I'm, I'm a crazy person about quotes. But I love that thing that Will Smith said where he said, uh, you know, when I was poor, when I was just starting out and I needed someone to buy me dinner because I didn't have any money, no one would ever buy me dinner or help me. He said, now that I'm rich and I don't need a penny from anyone, everyone's willing to buy me dinner. And they want to. And I think that can apply to this. And I could tell you firsthand, when I first started, it was like people like my family didn't want me to tell anybody <laughs> that I was doing voiceover. They're like, you, can, you can't tell people. It's embarrassing. You know, now, <laughs> I mean, now there's not now every person in my family. Now it's like, you know, uh, it's the greatest thing since sliced bread that I'm a voiceover artist and I do everything that I do. But when I first started, it wasn't like that. And we have to prove ourselves. We do. I mean, if someone tells you you don't have to prove yourself, it's they're, they're, I personally think they're full of baloney. But you know what? That's okay. We, it's okay to do that. 
You know, it's okay to have to prove yourself. And more importantly, you got to prove yourself to yourself. And everybody else will follow along. But you have to be the one that puts all of that weight on your shoulders and do it because you are changing your stars and you're changing your family's stars. So you have to take their worries and their fears and you have to put them on your shoulders. That's why I said the last part of this was that you have to be a superwoman or a superman. You have to be. You're building something that's never been built before. So don't let anyone fool you into thinking that this is easy. But the crazy thing is, is the hard parts are actually these parts that I'm talking about. It's the times in between where you have to keep going and we're, you know, and and trying to convince your family that this is the right thing, even though it's costing you way more money than you're making. <laughs> right? That happens. But I promise you, you keep at it and you're consistent. It will change and it will change your life forever. It has mine, and I've been blessed to work with a lot of people who's changed their lives. Um so that's my spiel for today. I hope that helped. Jake, thank you for that wonderful question. I know I haven't had a chance. There's been a lot of, I see there's a lot of chats going along, and um, uh, it's really wonderful to see the chat bar working again. Even though I, I, I can't see any Facebook comments, so I do apologize so much. I got to work on that. Uh, I don't know why that's happening, so I'll contact the matcher. But I can go ahead and look at uh, Instagram as well as uh, YouTube comments. And over on Instagram, I want to thank everybody. We have a lot of people. Um, uh, a what is it? AOP Productions, Tiffany. Uh, thank you guys for being here. Uh, Kurt, Walter, what's up? Julie. Uh, Tiffany says your blog comparing voices and voice one two three was so helpful. I've been on Voice Bunny and Fiverr for a while now, but always looking for more ways to grow. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, let's see. Samir over at YouTube. Zach, what's up, my man? Uh, Philippe over at YouTube. Uh, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Phil, uh, Flip, Alan, Switch Gaming. What's up? My Auto 66. Woody, uh, right in the, the comments. Let's see. Is there any questions down here? Question for after monologue. <laughs> Thank you. David knows me. He must have been watching. Like, hey, Anthony's on the monologue train. Here we go. David says, uh, question for after monologue. I'm struggling with time and being available. As a trucker, I'm, go I'm gone from 9 until 9 and off weekends. Committing to Fiverr feels scary with the passive sales stacking up. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a challenge. I will have to say, David, I wonder. I don't know what type of truck that you drive. If you're going from nine to nine, I wonder if you have a cabin because you could record in your cabin. Uh, if you, but if you're going from nine to nine, that means you're not going overnight, right? So then you're probably just working straight through. That's a long day, man. Um, Twelve hour days, which I know is like the limit now. I think, right? I don't know how long you could actually go a day, but if you're doing it, then here's the thing, David, which might help. It might help you is instead of doing it nighttime since you go to work at nine or you go to work at nine in the morning, I don't know when you leave, you know, get up at five and do a couple hours in the morning. You know what I mean? You got to, you, you have to sacrifice. This is the thing. You have to sacrifice something. And unfortunately, because we're talking about family, family's time is something that you have to sacrifice in this case. It sucks, but you have to understand that it's what we have to do now in order to get back later. Now, my family can't get rid of me. <laughs> they're probably no, I know they don't. They're about to say they're, I was gonna say they probably wish I was back at work, but now they can't get rid of me because I'm here. I get to make dinner. I get to do all the things that I couldn't do before. I haven't been gone. I mean, in a previous my previous life, I was gone so much from the house. I was gone on weekends. I was gone on nights because the job I did, you know, I did a theater, so I was always there. Was shows on the weekends and nights, and I was travel and all this stuff. It was just a lot. Now I'm here all the time. It's wonderful. And I still get in tons of work, right? But I'm still here, but I'm here. I'm never I'm not going anywhere. So it's really fantastic, but I had to put in all that time for a couple of years to now have the rest of my life back. The challenge is when you're first starting is you got to put in the time up front to get the time afterwards. Uh, same hour, 12 hour day. So I'm exhausted, but I do voiceover work because I want this. Absolutely. You got to, you got to. 
Switch Gaming, I'm very excited that Fiverr is picking up for me, but I'm still working 55 hours in my regular job, so I'm definitely starting to feel the struggle. Absolutely, man. By the time I was ready to uh, leave my job, I was falling asleep. I mean, I, I never had done that, but I was falling asleep at work. People were, like, hunting me down saying, what's wrong? Why are you falling asleep at work? Like, I, And I wasn't doing it on purpose. Like, I wasn't going places to fall asleep. I was literally falling asleep uncontrollably. That's how bad it was getting. Uh, yeah. So I'm on coffee IV drip. Absolutely, Angela. Uh, you're close, Angela. Uh, not going to lie to you. It gets harder, but it's worth it. It is. It's so worth it. Uh, where can I get the IV? Uh, she'll share it. Most of the time, books will extend time also. I would suggest beginners focus on some training, get some working com competency before dedicating the effort into going for paying gigs. My two cents. Thanks, Dave G. I, you know, that's I, I mean, that's a great advice, too. I know for me, when I first started, my sp my spouse and and uh, she was very um, adamant that I was not going to spend a dime <laughs> except for the forty dollars. And my mom had given me a gift card to Lowe's. That's how I bought my hobo for it. So I couldn't spend money on training. I couldn't spend money on anything. But I was determined to try, and I made it work. And then now. Now I pay for training and everything as much as possible. Um, but at the same time, you know, I had also a lot of acting training as that's what I went to school for. So you have to judge where you are and make the decisions. OK, but, you know, there's people like me out here trying to help um, with information. So do the best you can. And I agree with Dave. I think it's a great idea. But I also think that if you don't have that money, you shouldn't say I won't do this until I can. All right. Uh, and I'm assuming Dave would agree with that as, as well. So thank you, Dave. I appreciate it, man. Uh, Iota says, I agree. It's rough out there. ACX sounds good to me. ACX rocks. Uh, exactly. Shabbat, what's up? Uh, Ali says, hey, man, you're, you, are you going to post a video regarding your post-processing on your recorded voiceover? Uh, okay, so I have one. I Well... I have a course on it. I created a, um, a a course on my Adobe audition process, which you can find it over on my website. It's only $20, so it's not a great deal. I have posted a bunch of videos on how to format your stuff for ACX that are free here on the YouTube channel. So you can just search back and the, the previous videos for that. Um, but uh, if you're definitely interested in the course, check it out. It's a real good course. And um, yeah, I uh, made videos and, and show you everything. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. And I believe I, I might have made video on how to, f how to do it. No, no, I think I did it ACX. So I'll have to look, uh, flip says, Oh yeah. Biggest struggle for me is proving to the wife that this will work. It is hard. It is hard. It's very hard because it's not going to work at first. You got to work through it, right? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta go, you gotta go on faith that it's going to work even when it's not. Uh, my family sees the struggle, but they, but when they do see me, they can see how happy I am. And that's, imp I mean, that's, that's everything. I was working with another person, um, the other day and that's what they were saying too, that their, their spouse, their, their wife, uh, was, uh, you know, doesn't see them very much, but they know when they're having a bad day and they go in there, they come out, they're happy. They know it's worth it. And I think that's, that's something too. You know what I mean? It's something too. It makes you happy, changes your whole life. Uh, pretty good job, but it's not for me. I'm blessed that my mom and my sisters are behind me in starting my VO business. Absolutely, Shabbat. Uh, Carlos says, I'm single, no kids. I don't have that issue, but I do work long hours. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you still got to juggle work. Only question I have, do you guys like my logo? I, <laughs> I, don't, know. I don't see your logo, Iota. Uh, Big Jim. Hey, what's up, Big Jim? Uh, it's good to see you, my friend. Um... Flip, do you have any favorite books or courses that you've used for the business and marketing aspect of voiceover? Um, at this point, I think I've created my own courses that I would I would have used. <laughs> um, I read a lot of books um, on business because I I'm a firm believer that, and I I can. Could tr I attribute a lot of my success or success in being a full-time voiceover actor as focusing on growing the business part, uh, multiple streams of income, all these things like just but but focusing on this as a business 
and not a hobby that's helped me get to where I am. And uh, so like there are a lot of business books that I've read. I've audio books that I've, I've listened to over years that have gotten me to this point. But um, honestly, I, off the top of my head, I mean, I don't think there's, there's really nothing that I, that I've the training that I haven't done that I haven't gotten from YouTube or built my own training stuff. So I'm an oddity like that, I think. Uh, but now I work with biz. I work with coaches who do who who um, help me become a better business owner uh, as well. But you have to understand. I mean, I have I have a degree in theater. I have a master's in education, leadership, and teaching. Uh, I you know I've done this my whole life. So when it comes to performance on stage and coaching and directing people, not voiceover. Um, but uh, that's a really good question. It's really surprising to me because I think about it, I really haven't taken a great deal of courses myself. I do think at one point I bought an acting course, a voice acting course. Oh, oh yes. Um, Pat Fraley is a really awesome, I don't know if you've heard of him, but he's a, uh, an uh, uh, audiobook narrator as well as a um, director. Oh, what am I talking about? Sean Pratt. So I've done a lot of audio. So I have purchased audiobook um, stuff. And uh, Sean Pratt, who I've interviewed, um, he's in the he's in our Facebook group, but he's an incredible, incredible uh, nonfiction uh, narrator and uh, an accomplished teacher on his own right. And uh, I've interviewed him in the pod on the VO's Journey podcast, and I've purchased. Uh, uh, sessions working with him, multiple sessions where he's helped me tremendously, uh, tremendously. So Sean Pratt is definitely a good, uh, good coach for that. And, um, also what I was gonna say is Pat Fraley, Scott Brick. I've worked with Scott Brick, who is an audiobook narrator who does more on the fiction side. I've done some, so I've done, so actually all my, all, all the work that I've, uh, coaching that I've done, I've purchased has really been from, um, audiobook narrators. I did purchase. I did work with Bill Deweese a while ago, maybe a year and a half ago, for marketing purposes. Uh, like thirty minutes, I did a, a a meeting with him for marketing stuff, and that was a while ago. Um, but through all of that and everything, you know, I've created my own stuff. But that's kind of like, yeah. So and and of course, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the person who really helped so much. That was Earl Hall as well for me personally. Um, although I know he's not doing voiceover really anymore, but uh, he definitely uh, helped me an awful lot uh, throughout the process. So, yeah, so those are the people I think that helped me um, throughout the process. I will say that I went to many other people and, uh, and when I was beginning. And actually, the first person I went to was um, – what is it? It's a guy out in L.A., you know, who does all the um, – who who does a a, a VO a, a VO Buzz Weekly? You know what I'm talking about. The um, anyways, uh, seemed very nice guy. Uh, I went to him for a demo. You know what I mean when I first started because I didn't know what I was doing, and he told me I wasn't ready, which ended up being the the be one really great advice that I you know I wasn't gonna like you know just drop two thousand dollars on something that I wasn't ready to do. Um, so I think that's that's something that it's interesting your journey when you go into it, you know, but then I realized after doing all of that, that the person I really needed to depend on was myself to move forward and then trust myself on who to work with and always try to work with somebody who's doing something you're, you want to do or has accomplished what you want to accomplish. Do you know what I mean? That's what I always try to tell other people too, who work with me. You know what I mean? Um, and that's why I work with a lot of people who want to do what I've done uh, or what I'm doing. So that might have been a little more than you asked for on that. <laughs> uh, the Adobe course was fantastic. Thank you, Dalton. I appreciate that. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Uh, laugh aloud. Who falls for that? Someone must because they do that scam a lot. Oh, I missed that. Wait, wait. Uh, finally posted a gig on Fiverr. Already got a scam message. Yeah, I hear you. Really enjoy listening to the podcast. Oh, thank you. As an absolute beginner, I have a lot to learn. Thanks for all the help you. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Um, thank you for listening. Oh, yeah, I'm in the studio before and after day job. 
Sorry, I'm trying to figure it out. I catch up because the go down and I, I went too far. I would say, uh, right, just day cap. 14 is the longest. Out, okay, sacrificing is true, but regularly 12-hour work days of driving. Can't afford to fall asleep uncontrollably on my job. Will make time. I know it's it's it, that's the hard thing, right? The hard thing is forcing uh, us, our, our bodies and the way we think to change for now. I mean, it won't have to be like that later. Um, however, what's interesting, it was funny because I was talking about this the other uh, yesterday too with with my with the with my student is that even now I'm still doing that work, but I can control it differently. Like if I want to go to bed, I can go to bed. But if I need to stay up, you know, because I'm trying to work on something, like the the blog post I wrote for Voices.com versus Voice One Two Three, I spent I stayed up late a couple of nights working on that. Um, so. Uh, I agree. Not all have the money, but the training will accelerate, shorten your fuse to paying gigs. Sound better equals more chance buyers will choose. Uh, y- yes, absolutely, Dave. Absolutely. Uh, Ali, I make an engineering course. I may. I am taking a sound engineering course because I really wanted to be quality of my VO. I will check out the Adobe Audition course. Do you have Do you have a before and after with your post post processing? Uh, you mean like, do I show that in the course? Yes, I believe so. Uh, let's see, Jessica, what's for lunch? <laughs> okay. Uh, um, I like Pat Fraley. He taught me to focus on work, not my breasts. <laughs> yeah, uh, all right. Wait, Earl Hall isn't doing VO anymore. What's he doing? No, no. Well, he still does voiceover, but I don't believe he's coaching anymore. He's not coaching anymore. He's doing, he's doing some other stuff. Uh, if you know you want to do VO as a career, but you also want to get a college degree, do you think it would be better to get a theater degree, a business degree, or a marketing degree? Um, oh, that's a good question. So honestly, not none. Do not, don't you dare. Because the knowledge that is available for you to spend one one hundredth of that is right is 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 here on the internet mind you i got my degrees you know (laughs) what i what 20 20 some years ago so i mean you know uh and i didn't know any better but now you know what i mean i i all the knowledge you need is right here you know um so that that's my personal (laughs) that's my per and in books that's my opinion that's my opinion uh, business degree, <laughs> Dave, right? Car, uh, Karnak, one, two, three. I totally second that. Uh, thanks for the video about reading text. Absolutely. Well, hey, you guys, Anthony, years ago, I had my wife try to record a couple of commercials and it helped her understand and it was fun. Yeah, absolutely. My wife's actually recorded some stuff too because sometimes it comes across where they need a female narrator and uh, I, I had her record a couple things and she had fun. She was pretty good at it. All right, you guys. Uh, let's see. Tiffany over on uh, Instagram says, how would you recommend approaching ACX, pay for production or royalty share? Uh, both. Both. Whatever you do, don't do royalty share over three hours. That's a personal rule for me. Now, of course, I say don't you, you know, don't ever do that. You do whatever you want. But for me, uh, at the time, it was too much of a risk for time versus reward, you know, reward on your time investment. So I try to do books underneath three hours if they're royalty share. Yep. All right, you guys. Thank you so much. Um, I really... <laughs> what an amazing program. Awesome, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'm glad that today worked out a lot better. I'm sorry about Facebook and the comments. I saw a couple coming in here, but I really do appreciate you pushing through all of this. And uh, you have a wonderful, wonderful Tuesday. I will see you tomorrow on Wednesday. All right. See you later. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you, guys.